Welcome to the uh, meeting of the Finance and General Purposes Committee of Ramsgate Town Council, Wednesday, the 26th of January 2021. Do we have any apologies? Sorry. We have apologies from Councillors um, Young, Huxley, and Rizeki who are unwell. Did you want to explain about the recording of the uh, meeting? Yes. Um, Dean has had to attend to a, a, a family matter, and unfortunately with him goes the, the knowledge on how to stream this meeting. Um, so, and so we are recording the meeting, and it, but it will be put on um, YouTube tomorrow morning when Dean's in. It will not broadcasting live. Thank you. Thank you. Item two is declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations of interest? <clears throat> Item three is minutes of previous meetings. 3.1 is to approve the minutes of the ordinary meeting of the Finance and General Purposes Committee held on the 6th of October 2021. Minutes 105 stroke 21 to 113 stroke 21 as a true record. Are there any questions? Record. No? Can I propose then that we accept those minutes? Seconded. Thank you. All those in favour? Agreed. Agreed. 3.2 is to approve the minutes of the extraordinary meeting of the Finance and General Purposes Committee held on the 22nd of December 2021. Minutes 172 stroke 21 to 176 stroke 21 as a true record. Are there any questions? No. Then I will propose that we accept those, rec those minutes as a true record. Second. That's seconded. All those in favour? That's carried. Would you like to put time to sign those now or at the end? No, at the end. Next item is item four, finance. I'll hand over initially to the Thank you, Chair. Um, Uh, this draft budget has been based uh, around, uh, so we've got a mixture of recommendations from committees, for example, the, uh, the inclusion of funds for the neighbourhood plan and highways improvement plan, uh, a mixture of, oh, reserves policy, we should have one, uh, <laughs> uh, and a drafted um, such a policy for your consideration. I would suggest that the council does not appear to have a huge reserve because actually we have very little info other than that from the precept, um, which I think we should, we should be confident as a, as a given that we will get it. Um, if the council had a lot of um, other business interests, for example, if it, if it uh, owned a leisure centre and were reliant on getting a million pounds a year, that would be an income with a risk attached to it and you'd want to have a higher reserve for if there was a business failing there. But I don't think this council, based on the, the limited income other than the precept, that this council needs to have a, a particularly high reserve. <laughs> Uh, the, the town clerk has produced a draft financial reserves policy, which to me covers the types of reserves that this council might want to keep, or in fact is already keeping. And does anybody have any comments on that policy? Councillor Piper. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
given that this is relatively new for us, Joe, I wonder if I might ask through your chair, the town clerk, to give us some sort of indication if she's got previous experience of a town council having a reserve a kind of level of um, in relation to budget. It is customary for a council to hold between three and six months operating funds. Um, so that would be staffing costs, <coughs> utilities, um, rent and rates. Um, and I would propose for this council that the according to four months <coughs> it should be plenty. Um, I think if you're going towards six, holding six months, um, I think that, that would be higher than required. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Yes, um, just looking at the figures, if you're talking about holding six months, you're talking about near, looking at the expenditure this year, it's near enough half a million pounds. Would you, only a, I, what, if I can understand what you're saying, is that that's, that's at the high level of what you should do, <coughs> given that they, we've got nothing in there that's particularly risky. Could, could I ask you to hold comments about the actual sure. amounts sure, sure, sure. To, to we dealing with the budget yeah, but so and just consider you're right but let's just consider the policy at the moment yeah. thank you chair charlton holds six months but we have quite a, a large outgoing of staff in so we're carrying 72 staff so i think four months is a very generous amount for us to be holding given we don't have i mean our main our main protection would be our staff and our our overhead so any rent that we pay on here so that we can safeguard our our staff and our and the assets that we rent. So I, I actually think six months, four months is very generous. Yeah, but could I ask you to hold that until we actually consider that? I didn't mention amounts, I just said four months. Yeah, in terms yes. then of uh, picking up on what you're saying, in terms of commenting about the policy, I think it sets it out quite clear. It's well balanced, the two types of yeah. main types of yep. reserve, and uh, it reads very well. And yeah. thank you for producing yeah. it. Yeah. Any other questions on the policy? I propose, Chair, that we accept the policy. Mm. Is that seconded? That's seconded. Thank you. Vote. Oh, sorry, I need to vote. <laughs> All those in favour? Agree. Give Pat a nudge. Tails wagging. Shall I? She likes it. <laughs> the next document is a, uh, a standardised grant application form. We have one application form for landscape application, uh, something else for event applications, and no application for um, organisations like the Citizens Advice Bureau. And I think it makes sense. The, the questions that you ask, whether it's uh, a weekend event or something that you're funding for these activities, it, it, you still ask the organisation the same questions, very similar questions. Um, and I would suggest that there's one application form that can be used for, for any request for funding. And then it means that councillors also have one form to, 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 be, to be familiar with. <coughs> Yes. Damn good idea. Yes. I also think it's a good idea. Um, might I offer, with my literacy hat on, to go through it and just make sure that it's completely readable and understandable, even for uh, applicants who aren't very confident with the form. I assume that's acceptable. Easy week, pleasure. Yes. Yeah, I think it's a good application. I thought it was a lot better than a lot of the ones I've had to fill in in the past. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh -huh. yeah. Is that the general feeling then that um, can somebody propose acceptance? I'll propose. I accept. I second. You accept it as well. <laughs> All those in favour? Thank you. Carried. The next item is item 4.3, receive a report from Richford, Deputy Town Clerk, on the third quarter accounts for the 2021-2022 financial year. <coughs> um, 
Any questions on those? Could I ask, how confident are you about your figure that you're predicting for the end of year? questions? Can I propose acceptance? I'll second that, Chair. Yeah. All those in favour? Carried. Right, Town Clerk, now, now the budget. Overexcited to start. Um, uh, so for, uh, for producing a, a draft document, um, I've uh, kept the, the founding charge the same, which is obviously the, the your consideration, but to, to, to have a starting point. Um, the uh, tax base has increased. So if there was the same number, of, if, if the residents were charged the same amount, it would actually give an increase of 17,000 and um, just over 500 pounds. Um, within my report, I've um, put a bit of some further detail into um, some specific area where, the, where there's um, changes suggested. Um, members like me to, to, to go through them all? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so staffing salaries, um, okay. added in 8%, and that's not a recommendation that staff have um, an 8% increase. Um, this is because we've got the project by the Society of Local Council Collapse Consultancy Service going on at the moment, um, reviewing um, job descriptions and um, benchmarking the salaries and this is a just in case their recommendations throw up anything unexpected with regard to the salaries. Um, I'm not expecting it to but it's a, a just in case and then if the money is not required it, it's not, or not recommended it, it's um, and then it's not needed. There's also the um, the um, salary increment recommended by um, the National Association of Local Councils and that one is the current year's increment is not yet agreed with the government and what you would usually do is continue to pay the, the staff the same amount and then when that is approved you then backdate their salaries to the start of the year, whatever it is that's been approved. This 8% is intended to cover whatever that increment is that's agreed by the government in the year and any recommendations that might be coming from the SLCC review. Can I ask if you have any questions on any item, raise them as the clerk goes through. Um, also, on a, a second matter, um, not something that's, that's going to add up to much, but I, I would like to put forward, is a, an emergency call-out figure. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, sometimes that could be at 6 o'clock in the evening, mm -hmm. or it can be at 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I, this usually falls to the um, uh, to Chris to undertake. Um, I think if, uh, if there was a, a small sum plus toil given for, for those activities. It would need to be something that can be evidence that you have had a call from our, our burglar alarm company. Um, and I've suggested a, an emergency call out sum of £30, <coughs> which would be payable at the end of the month with the, the salary payments. Um, 
Next item was um, computer hardware. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. What's the problem? Um, I might have misread that then. Um, because you, you mentioned the £30 plus the required toil, but later on it says 15 minutes toil is not deemed to be appropriate. I, I've just written in the margin on here um, the core out fee plus one hour toil yes. as a minimum. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether it's appropriate to suggest yeah, It takes you that long to get out of bed, doesn't it? Well, that's what <laughs> I was thinking. One, one hour time off in a... Would the employee then have the choice of taking the hour off or being paid that hour as well? At the moment, um, it is toil that is yeah. the, um, the, the return um, within our contracts. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is a later agenda item about toil. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 I didn't necessarily want to request a, an eight percent increase and also start looking at paying additional for the weekend and evening working at this, at this stage. Let's leave it. Is it, is it. Chair, is it appropriate for me to suggest then the, the thirty pounds plus one hour? Can I yes. that? Yeah. If that's, as we go through, if that's an amendment <coughs> that it proposes, yep, and seconded, yep. All those in favour? That's carried. Could I ask you about the £30? Uh, does that include on cost? So is the real cost of that £30? Plus our on costs, which are they running at about thirty percent at the moment? I think. No, this would be a uh, one one off payment yes. that we wouldn't that as a, as an organisation we wouldn't then have to pay additional on costs. So thirty pounds yeah. becomes forty pounds in real terms. Okay, thank you. Um, computer hardware upgrades and renewals. So at the moment, um, the staff will have. Uh, desktop computers, and um, when they've been working from home during COVID, mm. they've been doing so on their personal mm. devices. Not good. Um, I would like to start moving everybody over to laptops, um, because for those staff who still like to be based at a desk with possibly two computer screens, you can still do that with with the base unit being a laptop. Um, we're waiting for confirmation from our, our computer supplier as to how old all the um, uh, desktop computers are, but I believe they're, they're all in excess of four or five years old. So I think a program of upgrading people to, to laptops. Ideally not doing it where everyone gets a laptop in one year, because then in five years time you're looking at yeah. a, another process. But if, if I could um, just slowly start to move people over to laptops. Um, a lot, um, a lot of capital purchases, um, new composting toilets at two of the allotment sites, I believe has been discussed, um, that uh, Councillor Campbell originally raised this in 2012-2013 and, and has been approved but has just for some reason never made its way into action. Um, I had a uh, so at the moment, the sites that have toilets have, have two, and it works that one's in use at one time, and then whilst that composts for a while, the other one's in use. Um, I believe it's de um, desirable um, to replace with um, an access-friendly toilet. Um, when I had a, a quick look online, the, the absolute premium product to, to buy one of these, we're looking at seven and a half thousand. Um, the senior technician is doing some research. Um, we believe we can get something for, for less than that amount. But I think if we had a, had a budget for 15,000, that would, that would clearly be enough to cover this project. Um, Any questions, comments? Yeah, I mean, it's been taking a long time to get going, so it's a good idea. I think people will use them. Or use not. prunes then, Tony, I think. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, but... Uh, some will use them somewhere. 
We do need some facilities on our allotments, otherwise people use alternative means. And I, I would be, I wouldn't necessarily look for the cheapest, and I wouldn't necessarily look for the most expensive. But I think there's a lot to be gained in in, in trying to buy a quality product that maybe is more than we want to pay, but it will last longer. So I yeah. definitely think we shouldn't be looking for something that's cheap, if that makes sense. I think also we need someone uh, professional in to, to help us with the. Um, what to do with the old facilities mm. and advice on well how long do you then leave that around oh. before you can do something else with it mm. um you normally just fill them in you fill them in and where you go and leave that fill it in take it take go prize winning arrows on it yeah, yeah. i mean put so a well, warning me. notice up <laughs> but yeah i don't can't see that being a problem <laughs> Is that okay? Uh, that just means it may be new. Um, also, the allotment officer is um, uh, keen to um, explore the idea of having a, a personalised entry system at a couple of the sites. Um, so this is where each allotment holder would have a code or a card or something. And when we have something unpleasant happening or that there, there, there are that there, there have been some um, illegal activities it would be helpful to know who was on site at that time um, again this is something that Chris has been uh, uh, he's met with someone last week to, to get us a quote it's something that he's familiar with working with in relation to schools uh, so again this budget could Pending costs and investigation um, could be used to cover that. Well, my only concern here would be the possibility of vandalism and how much how that could be overcome and how much it would cost to overcome it. So long as that's looked into, I'm fine there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, question: I mean, is there? I mean, is there a, a problem of? Unauthorised people being on the allotments. I mean, is there is there any issues there? I mean, that we would require this. Um, um, yes, there are there are things crop up every now and then where people are supposed to have. The idea is that if someone's not particularly able, they can have a registered helper go on there and help. We get problems now and then. There's someone on there. They, they, they're not the registered helper. I mean, usually you can find out about it because the site reps are pretty on the ball about who's in there and who's not. They know who's in there and who's not. But this thing about the entry system, that's been that's been up in the air for, a, for a quite a while. Because what the problem we had is got locks on it. The people are always losing the key. So you have the cost to replace the key. And then the lock would jam because it's out in all weather and it rusts over. So you'd have to cut the lock off and do the whole lot again and then issue another lot of keys. So whatever way you look at it, there's a cost of keeping it as it is. Although there would be a cost if you had this, like a door entry thing, you know, the security entry thing. The only problem I've got with that is that there will be people on there who will struggle to actually operate that. Yeah, so that needs to be bought. I mean, we find out how many, perhaps if we ask them. But some people, mm. know, they've got eyesight problems and they can't see the numbers. <laughs> they're, they're, but it's, generally speaking, it's a great idea. If you standardise it for the whole site, I think it's a reasonable thing to do. Uh, yeah. Councillor Albert. I just think it's a bit over the top, Chair, that's all. I mean, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not an allotment person, um, but, you know, and obviously respect the people who go and, who go and do that. But I, I, I just think it's a bit over, over the top. And uh, I think it's too, too, much, too much money to go with it. I'm, I'm not in favour of it, Chair, I have to say. Councillor. Yeah, it's just to say, I'm not, I'm not pushing it desperately, Stephen, um, no. really not. Um, if you find out how much the thing's going to cost, then you can work out which way, which way is cheaper. Which is cheaper to, to buy that um, and see if it works. It may not, you may get problems developing. 
Mm. And it's been later on when he'd done it. Or is it, you know, is it better just to keep the locks on there and replace them periodically when something goes wrong or someone needs to heal the lock plates and whatever? That's the mark. From what I've heard at Jackie Baker's, yeah. it's not anything wrong with the locks and the keys. It, the thefts of, of people coming over the yeah. fence. Yeah. An elderly couple who had a, been there a few years, they had their generator stolen and all sorts of things. It, and, you know, it's really put them back. That's the wing. Uh, thank you. I think, we, I think we might be ended up paying more money. I come from a school background and the touchpad somebody will write the code on the floor there'll be access problems it will be broken and we had more problems with with the touchpad than we ever did with normal the caretaker and his normal keys so okay. i probably agree that it's it's worth considering yeah, i know this turn class thank you chair um there, there is more information um that i could pro provide about events on the allotment but we prefer to do that under confidential <laughs> Um, and with regard to um, the te technicians looking into where you possibly have a fob mm. type system. So, Harbour have a fob. Do I have a proposal on this item? Well, I propose that you, what your intention is, as I understand it, is to look into it and see what's available. So, yes. Uh, and the associated budget for this in the toilets are at £20,000. Okay. So I'll propose that's a reasonable mm -hmm. solution. That's second, Dave. Those in favour? Decision. Decision, yeah. Decision. yeah. He's looking at it. I'll go along with it. Those in favour? That's carried. I would imagine there's quite a few activities yeah. in the allotment. Mm -hmm. Just on the subject of allotments and capital purchases, maybe that I completely missed it. I think it was about a year ago now, we called for a report on the purchase of some land to get some extra allotments. And I don't recall us receiving a report about that piece of land or following up on any other offers of land that were being banded around at the time. Um, it's not appropriate for me to mention that here and the, the purchases, and I apologise, but I might have just missed it. I think that piece of land was sold. Yes. So we couldn't take that forward. Okay. But later on, we may consider what, what else we could do okay. in that well, direction. I miss a formal report to say we investigated. And I think it was dropped because the piece of land was sold. Okay, thank you. Uh, the uh, next item was um, uh, democracy, and this is where um, a full all-board election, which we will be expected in late 2023, costs in the region of £25,000. The council has previously resolved to put money aside towards this, and I've made the assumption that £12,500 has been saved up so far with a recommendation that another 6,250 is put aside this year. So that again, the same figure can be put forward next year to have 25,000 pounds available. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 Carry on. Uh, the technician's vehicles, there's still work outstanding regarding the um, getting the unlock float operational and bringing staff to using it. But I think there's actually a, uh, as I've come to see how the technicians work, where they work, how they move around, I think there could do with being a, a project of just looking at, at all their vehicles um, with both milk floats, one milk float, something else. I think the, the mix isn't quite mm. right yet. And so this is a proposed budget for um, having a review of this in the year and having some money available for whatever the, the, the recommendations might be. This is another look into it and bring back yeah. item. Yeah. Could, could, it, 
in the review, could you bring back some data on sort of the, the type of the length of the journeys they do? Because I mean, I would imagine most of it's around, except for the COVID period when they were going to Ashford twice, three or four times a day. I would imagine most of it's in and around Ramsgate and in and around Thanet. But it would be an idea to to have a look at whether that journey requires a big a big vehicle or a small bit vehicle or three three of our workers or something that's being towed. So that would be quite useful to see to see a bit of a breakdown of, of that and then I think that that will that will uh, sort of evidence what we need to do to make our fleet uh, more efficient and probably greener. But I think also there's um, quite a useful actually something really quite small mm -hmm. but for nipping about with a swimmer and doing yeah. Uh, yeah. little things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They, they did have the tourist, the TDC tourism little van, didn't they? And that was really useful during yeah. lockdown. I do think that this needs to be actioned fairly urgently because of all sorts of things. I don't want to go into here. Uh, so next one is um, Custom House and Radford House Repairs and Maintenance. Um, so for the custom house budget, this is where uh, we're getting on top of a, a number of annual activities that should be undertaken. Um, a, we're awaiting the results of a, a quinquennial inspection by an architect, which um, I expect to come back with a, a number of things that should be done urgently or can be programmed in over the course of five years, just to ensure our, our good governance and keeping the, the building in a good state of repair to make sure that little problems don't become mm, big, big costly problems. The, so for Radford House, that budget is less about the rolling maintenance work, but there were a number of um, matters identified for action before the development stage starts. It's almost like making the, the building safe mm. before you can get builders in to, to do major work. Um, so there, there's um, two budgets proposed for repairs and maintenance. Any comments? Sensible idea. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm aware that um, the council, or I believe that the council has never considered um, the, um, the review of uh, town and council members' allowance. Um, that was issued by the East Kent Joint Parish Independent Remuneration Panel That's last year. Mm. Um, that is going to be on the agenda for your consideration uh, for the meeting on the 2nd of February. But in lieu of that matter itself being considered, I have put in that sum into the budget, should that be something that you decide to, um, an expense that you uh, decide to pay. I didn't even know that organisation existed. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the mouth full, isn't it? Uh, insurance. Our, our three-year contract with Zurich is due to expire in October. And Zurich have forewarned me that whether we stay with them or we go somewhere else, to just uh, expect there to be a, 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 a notable increase in insurance of buildings. And cost of building supplies. Um, if, they said, if we add 10% to the, the cost of our insurance for the, the buildings, they say they don't expect it to be that much, but it's, it would be prudent to have that to decide. So when we are talking about insurance, just in case that, that well, I, I think it is likely that we'll find an increase, Makes sense. Yeah. Um, I put in a reduction of five thousand pounds, bring it down to thirty thousand. Um, because year on year the council does not receive anywhere near the thirty-five thousand that it budgets for this. Um, this could of course be increased again. I think when I was at this point in the budget preparation. I was thinking that maybe some money needs to be saved. <laughs> One thing I wasn't sure about is um, how consistently the Ramsgate Fund is promoted 
and uh, the last couple of months where I've been looking out for it, um, it, it really is consistently promoted across all our all our channels. I know the councillors, the members are mentioning it to people in their community, but I think we're still not coming up near to the, the 35,000 that, that's budgeted each year. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is what is the normal um, spend for it? Um, I think it's like it, it does vary, but it, it's consistently underspent. I've got four applications coming to council next week. Um, the spend at the moment is is ten thousand. So it is consistent um, every um, year. What about the figure pre-pandemic? That's a more reliable figure than, than perhaps a pandemic figure. No, no difference. I don't believe there's any difference with the pandemic. It's just the number of members subscribed from. Yeah, it is pushed out. And we have we have asked councillors to spread the words mm. and previous councillors as well, but just to consistently under subscribe. Yes, I mean, I, I, I chair an organisation that applies for both, or has applied for both in previous years, but I'm, I'm quite mindful of we've got the, 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 uh, the Queen's Jubilee coming up. I'm quite mindful that maybe we, and I know the <coughs> funding is always oversubscribed, isn't it? So maybe, maybe we need to make a decision, and I know there are probably going to be lots of people wanting to run street parties, and I think it's a very good idea to try and bring our communities together as much as we can and actually build on trying to build a cleaner and tidier and pretty more flowered communities all over the place on the back of that. Uh, so can we can we hold that money and maybe if we oversubscribed on the events funding, we actually at, at some point make, make a decision to move that across if we've got lots of people wanting to run appropriate community events because uh, I do I do think the money's there it's it's, it's their tax money for, for, for example it's actually residents money so I do think that rather than letting it disappear we, we may be trying one budget is undersubscribed and the other one is constantly oversubscribed maybe we need to do some rebalancing so instead of removing that budget entirely we just rebalance it um, I'm hoping to bring a paper about the Jubilee celebrations to the council meeting. Um, do you want to make a proposal? I propose a motion that, that we, we keep the money within the Ramsgate fund slash events fund and depending on, uh, can you reword this, depending on the uptake of uh, grants, community grants for events, if that's oversubscribed, we come back and make the decision to, to move the money about to rebalance. Right. Okay? Can we do that and take it from the miscellaneous to keep the precept the same? Uh, is that seconded? Okay. That's seconded. There are costs to TDC of every community group that wants to run, sadly, a street party. Uh, including possibly. Yes, Councillor. Yeah, I was just going to add to that uh, yeah. that I'm in correspondence at the moment with mm. the neighbourhood team about what exactly they're planning on doing uh, about street parties, mm. and they have promised that there will be new guidance yeah. out of the yeah. Good. Uh, all those in favour of the amendment? That's carried. Now, the next item is Charlotte Court Markets. It's currently sitting with myself to write a business plan for the markets, and I'm afraid I haven't, I haven't done this yet. Um, I, I, can, I can talk in detail about the, the considerations for the, for the market, um, but I expect that there will need to be some, some setting up and organising arrangements, and possibly in the first year, not much in the way of income. Uh, so in the draft budget, I put income from Charlotte Court Markets is, is zero, but with um, setting up and getting going, um, I put in uh, six uh, six thousand as a as a, as a draft setting up budget if required. 
Yeah, it's something that we've been going to do for a while now. We're going to do it, we should do it. I think given the fact that uh, TDC have woefully dragged their heels and made us all quite angry about getting our own market back, I think we've got to do something. And I, I would suggest that 6,000 isn't enough and we might have to come back, but I, I certainly would support at least 6,000 coming into this and we, and, we, and we try and work together to get something going because I am fearful that if April will come and go and our market still won't be there. Yeah, I agree with Councillor Wing. I mean, every time this goes on, we love Ramsgate or anything, people really want the money. Yeah. And it seems to be quite a pivotal thing for bringing people into the town. Indeed. I'd, I'd like to add that it isn't without the, the six, the, the three East, 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 East Cliff and the three Central Harbour, particularly led by uh, Councillor Crittenden over there, but we've all, we decided she'd take the lead and we'd pile in every now and then. Uh, but we've had little success haven't we it's now our emails that i think are getting quite stroppy mm. yeah could i could i just say mm. yeah I, I read the discourse but could i just say this is the whole town it's not just it is i mean and i said that you know the market is a driver for the town and the town is a driver for the for the whole of ramsgate but i mean we've tried to put the pressure on the six of us to Jointly together. Yeah, feel free. Yeah, I think just just to clarify the point of of the uh, six councillors uh, for Eastcliff and uh, Central Harbour. It's just that the market was held in the High Street, which is the boundary between the two walls, and that's really why we we kind of got stuck in. Uh, more power to you, but I just wanted wanted to feel able to. That's my say. Going in. <laughs> Just to close in one, that, that when it was uh, in the process of shutting down, when it was dying at death, I went round to all the market stall people and said, what's the issue here? Why are you all leaving? And he said that the rents that they were forking out to TDC had gone up. And what they were saying to me is it wasn't financially viable them to come on that day or that particular day and they weren't doing it you know because they're, they're business people they, they're only going to come if they can afford what they're paying in terms of rent and uh, they're going to have loads of people about buying their stuff you know. was, was this while it was still in the high street yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i went up and down all over the flower store uh, the, the other guy that does sacks um, there are lots of them in the bread market the bread guy they all had this problem. They just thought, I've had enough of it. You keep putting the rent up. And, yeah. So you've got to bear that in mind when you come up to your costings about how much you're going to charge. Yeah. Maybe you could bear it a bit in not making money, too much money out of it. Well, this is, this is a TDC decision. Yeah. Well, the street market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. if, Chair, if I just to say, just to. Um, correct my colleague a little bit here, is that the, the market was run by Hugh Mark, and it's Hugh Mark who charged the people, the storeholders. The council charged Hugh Mark, and then it's up to Hugh Mark, whatever that they charge the, the people. So um, so it's possibly, it's, it's probably them that cost them out of it. I believe that. I, I, I think the cost is passed on from one to another because I think the figure that, that TDC want for the market is 16,000 but there is a way we can circumnavigate this. We run our own market and we fill in an events document, document we, we fill in events documentation which there are people around this table that do, that do and we run 52 markets one a week. Uh, the paperwork's the same. So I, I seriously think that <laughs> But if we don't get any joy from TDC, we have got to do something because there is, I, I, on Facebook, there is a group of residents having a meeting about the market. But Councillor Wing, we can't run it in the high street. Why can't we? It's an event. We it's can't. Because, because TD, I would suggest that TDC will be seeking income from it. They, it would be an event in exactly the same way they would we would we would pay for the road closure they can't they can't charge you for an event other than the 75 quid you have to pay to hand your paperwork in <laughs> they can charge you for the land they can yeah they, the land. they can charge you a land charge but they would be and i'm sure there would be there would be a cost but it wouldn't 
but we would at least have the beginnings of a market to try and drive our, at least we'd try and take control of something because sat here waiting for them to do something is painful. I, I believe that um, Ramsgate Town Council would be able to operate the market as a market operator. Mm. Um, yeah. And in that sense, we could do what QMark did. But, um, um, I know that I've had a um, conversation with the town clerk about it before, but it would be up to us when we're yeah. in front with our staff and everything else to take on that level of commitment to run that event. Mm. You need a licence from KCC. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. As an, when I used to do events in the market all the time, you could only close the road so many times a year if you were somebody doing an event. Now, obviously, that's different for, for a, a body. Um, so, TBC could close the high streets in the market every year and so on and so forth. And I don't know what the rules are with, with the town council. But as an organisation, you've only got the opportunity of closing the road 12 times a year. <coughs> um, to do something, so we couldn't have a weekly market unless mm. we, we were that body that was able to do that. So that's again something you'd have to, mm. uh, you know, iron out really. Councillor Piper. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just returning to Charlotte Court for a second, the last, again, it might be a memory thing for me, I'm getting old. Um, I think we had a discussion about the Charlotte Court market and we were talking about smaller stores with smaller items. Is that still the plan? Yeah, definitely. For example, if the flower guy turns up and takes up half of Charlotte no, no, no. and the guy with the lovely, impressive beard with his clothing store, you know, that's going to block Charlotte Court completely. So we're still looking at smaller, I don't very mean, di very different base. Trinkets. Very different base. I don't mean tickets, but smaller Rough. market stores. <laughs> I think if there's a, a feeling that Ramsgate Town Council could bid for the street market, I think somebody needs to do some serious work in finding out what that would involve, how much it would cost, and then bring it to a council meeting. Do you agree? Okay, so is this, this item is okay if I haven't heard any propo other proposal? Okay, carry on. Yes. Um, and the next thing is the, the balance brought forward and unallocated, unallocated. Could I go back and just make a proposal, sorry. Could I make a proposal that we ask the chair and the town clerk to write to Dunnett District Council begging for them to bring our market back, uh, asking for regular updates, because you're right, to the six ward councillors, uh, so, that, so that we can feed information through the system actually, uh, and give us a guarantee that, that the deadline of the April, which I think is the third deadline, is actually the deadline when we will be running up and down the, the, the high street, waving our knickers in the air, saying the market's back. But we're really... I assume the chair is happy to do that. Yes, I'm happy to do that. I think the more the more of us that can actually keep the pressure up, the better. So, if that's seconded? Yeah, I'll second that too. That's seconded. Those All those in favour? Yes, yes. That's carried. Two hands. The final item on my report is the proposed reserve, uh, uh, of reserves policy. Um, is to do with the balance brought forward and unallocated funds. The council should not have unallocated funds. Mm -hmm. And as such, I've suggested a budget to account for every penny. Uh, these can be amended. I, I've just given you suggestions. Um, and it doesn't mean that every penny should be spent in the year. You don't need to aim to, to end the year with zero. Um, but the, the layout of the budget, so on the left hand side, these are the, the ongoing commitments that the preset and our small amount of other income. These are general reoccurring activities and things that we want the, the, the preset to cover. The right hand column is a suggestion on how to, to deal with the unallocated reserves and uh, what will be the, the balance brought forward at the end of this financial year. Can I suggest we deal with the left hand column first if there are any questions? 
or comments. Most of it we've just been through, so. Is it a map? I've made one amendment under um, town promotion. The cost of the museum app at five thousand pounds. I've been in contact with the um, the provider of that service, and um, he will charge us three thousand pounds. Oh, good, well done. Well, love a bargain. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? No. Do you need more time? Can I just also, the Visitor Information Centre, um, is the volunteers, or would that be organised, would that be done? Um, so there's a... Um, Volunteer Open Day taking place at Radford House next Thursday, and was this, this, so uh, from from our point of view, this was an event to try and um, get some new volunteers in for the VIC, um, but also to, to to make an event of it. We've got um, I think eleven other stalls joining us. Uh, Mencat Citizens Advice Bureau. There's going to be a table. Uh, representing all the green gardening groups. Um, I think it's taking place from two in the afternoon until seven. It's, um, uh, it went out in the community ad magazine, uh, it's on Facebook, there's posters around town. So hopefully that will get, get people in for uh, looking for new volunteering opportunities, which will also bring us, bring us some new, new people to work in the BIC. Brilliant. So that was my first question. So what I wanted then to say, thank you, is so I assume that amount that we've been close for so long here to the commercial centre would stay the same and that's something that would be to work on it wouldn't go up or down. That's just how we use it because it was not it? A big um, element of the income and expenditure relating to the visitor information centre is ticket sales. Uh, we sell tickets for National Express, Bayless, mm -hmm. a variety of coach companies. And there's, there's not a huge amount of profit in it, but where you've got income of £7,000 for the IC, and a lot of that expenditure, if suddenly we don't spend, uh, um, we, we sell 50% less tickets, well, actually, both sides of the budget yeah. will be less because of it. Councillor Piper. Just a clarification, please, Chair. Thank you. The um, <clears throat> town promoter expenses, I maybe got that wrong, but I thought that would appear within the um, staffing salaries budget now, because although it's not a salary, isn't it an expense she's entitled to claim on top of it? Uh, uh, no, it's, it tends to be used for things like um, if she's printing posters or expenses relating to town promotion. Uh, so occasionally if she's... Um, Doesn't come out of her salary, no. No, no, I, that's <laughs> not what I meant. I probably didn't explain myself, Chair. I, I'm, it's position on the piece of paper. I, I would have thought an expenses that's linked to the activities of a member of staff would have appeared right. as an expenses item under staffing. I, 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 if it's not, sorry, just a... Uh, it was, uh, so, for example, in relation to the um, Christmas uh, switch on event, um, she was, uh, it was printing posters, um, buying some uh, small Christmas lights, uh, Christmas presents to give them to be given out by Santa. So, I think it is part of the the town promotion and events budget is how it's used. It, it, yeah. It's not the amount of money, it was just where it was on the sheet. I, I, I think the wording needs to change because I, I, I sort of get what the wording does confuse it. Mm -hmm. It sounds as if she might be claiming right. petrol costs to go on a course, so, so which would, would relate to her. So it, maybe it's town promotion expenses rather than her personal expenses because yeah. I've seen a rushing to Woolworths to get some extra petrol. Yeah. Some of the expenses actually goes directly to those that do design. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it's not to her. Thank you. 
Uh, no other questions? No. Can I propose then that we adopt the budget as well that side of the budget? Um, I'll second that's written. Yeah. That's seconded. All those in favour? Thank you. Incidentally, that means there will be no increase or decrease in, in uh, the precept. Yes. Before we move on, could I just say something about the um, tax base? About the tax base. There are two uh, 20,335 properties at the moment in Ramsgate. Um, of those, TDC tell, tell us that 334 are exempt from council tax, which means that there are 20,000 that are chargeable. 8,212 of those qualify for a single person discount, which is 25%. Um, there are 72 empty properties that are charged at either 100% extra council tax or 200% or 300%. I'm not sure how, how that's determined, but TDC councillors may know that. So, what it means is that the amount that's chargeable comes down to 148, oh, sorry, 14,813 properties. In terms of band D equivalents, you know, because different bands are charged different amounts, but then band D equivalents, that amounts to 11,902. And that's the number that uh, the tax take is based on. So if you multiply that by our precept, that's how we arrive at um, the figure that our taxpayers are paying us. Just thought I can share that information if, if you want to know. David, did you say that there were 22,000 properties and 8,000 of them were single, at single amount? Is that uh, right? Yes. That's one of the drivers of the need for more buildings. Single people. Sorry, that's me. Percentages across, and we do in fact have the highest single um, adult occupancy in the whole Kent. It's a very interesting situation. Yeah, we also have the highest, um, the highest, highest amount in, in the lower bands, the bands below band D, which is why. Well, which, which works to our detriment, if you like, in terms of tax take. Right, can we move on to the right-hand side of the um, budget? And Clark. Um, so, if the just balance brought forward, um, you're not, uh, there's a note in purple text which just shows where this has come from. Um, so there, there's a sum in the reserve account plus the uh, predicted balance in the general account at the end of the year, minus a few items that are really balanced. And then the expenditure against these, um, so there's certain things that are committed already. We've got um, the Architectural Heritage Fund's Project Development Grant, 58,300. Uh, project Manager Stage 2, estimated at 30,000. 
The next one is a suggested wrap-up budget for all those other things to be determined to be determined in the year. Uh, the 250,000 is that um, it's actually a, a bit more than four, four months worth of, of, of about buildings, but I, I think that's a, a, a good amount to be to be kept aside for if there's a loss of earnings somewhere. And then we've got the interest election expenses. This is how much of it I've assumed has been put aside to date. Cool. Great. Yeah. Close that chair. Close acceptance of that chair. I said we've got people that wish you. Well, okay. It's been proposed and seconded. I, I just wanted to say so these are the amounts that we, we may not spend, but they've got a, a, we can't have any loose money. That's it. Um, but also, the, 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 the sum for council projects and assets. <coughs> We should have a more clear purpose mm. than that. Uh, we've, we've oh, got, sorry, mate. We've got too much. Mm. Um, so, and I think it's where they were, it was thought that there was, there was things like Radford House coming mm. up. Yeah. But I think now mm. now's the time to put some clarity around the yeah. figure. Okay. Mm. Anybody else? I would, I would like to reinforce what the clerk just said. We do need to come forward, I think, uh, shortly to get more clarity about how much um, th the estimates on Bradford <coughs> House will be. I've heard, fi I've heard figures of between 700 and 800,000. We need, we need clarity on that, I think. Um, and also, um, what other ideas we have for capital projects, if any. <coughs> yeah. As you know, TDC have just produced their Ramsgate forward plan, whatever it's called. Some of us went to a presentation. Um, they seem to be looking for Ramsgate Town Council to be part of that. There are some projects that TDC have put in there that we've expressed support for in the past. One is the linear linear garden on the East Cliff. Another is the um, beach club that we could make a proposal to TDC to work with them on on those projects. Or there could be other projects that that people think think we should be doing. I mean, it sticks in, in my tongue that when our assets come, go to auction, that maybe sometimes we should be considering going to auction to buy those assets. The lift, for example, on the Western Undercliff. It sticks in me because we're technically buying back our own assets, but uh, I don't, I, I'm in favour of us taking control of more of our assets because then they're a way of generating, of seeking funding. And we know we've got experts in this room, particularly, that can put funding bids in because they do it. Uh, but yeah, it's certainly something to consider that it maybe by spending we can generate more income. And I also think maybe we don't just consider partnerships with with Sanit District Council, because I think that'd be quite tricky, but also maybe we consider partnerships with, with other developers that have got like-minded uh, community interests, shall I say. Uh, so, if, if, for example, we could get that car park and there was a local developer that wanted to come in with us to build that, that park and, uh, as a shared interest, then we, I think they're called joint, joint they, there's, a, there's a word for them, but I certainly think we need to explore all options and not commit ourselves to anything until, yeah. And with the Chair's permission, perhaps we could consider that at the next Council meeting. Um, I thought about the lift, but I honestly couldn't think of anything we could do with it. Repair it. <laughs> yeah. The tourist attraction, but we've got the West Undercliff Cafe, which is derelict, so is that would be a problem. There? The lift. Is it there inside the shop? The, all the workings are still in there, apparently. Ask Maxine, she'll know. Oh, yeah. 
It probably does. I mean, we could have bought the Western Undercliff Cafe for a hundred thousand, and we, that is one asset that we could have got back. I that would have. You need a business case for these things. Don't you? There would have been a business case because we could have leased it out in exactly the, the the same way TDC leased it out. But maybe, or we could have bought it, put in plans, and then sold it exactly as the developers done. I think it's made a tidy packet of half a k uh, on the back of a derelict property. Um, I mean. You know, I'm not anti-capitalist, but I think we've got to make sure that, that, that we use capitalism to do good. And, it, and we, we could have had a cafe up and running if we'd have bought that cafe uh, uh, or supported a community to take that cafe on. And there was a community with 70,000 that could have taken it. So I think maybe we've got to look at some of these op opportunities in a different way, maybe. Uh, I, I think you're right. And I think the town clerk is quite capable of working up a business case or employing somebody to do that for us but we but you know we need to focus on some ideas I'm, I'm going back a while and look at project manager has sort of exactly yeah. we lost that yeah I, I, you know um I, I do think we need to be careful and uh we need to uh be steady in what we do and, and what and what we're looking at what we don't want is for the, our residents to think that we're entering into development, and uh, which is not our remit. To be to be quite honest, we're here to represent our members and to do the best that we can for the town. And I don't, I'm not discounting what you're saying, Becky, um, but I do think we need to be very, very careful who we get into bed with, and uh, so. For me, it would be a, a softly, softly approach, and and I think what we need to do. I mean, there are other things. You, take Spencer Square, for for instance. You know, you have got stuff like that there. You've got the cabinet not working. You've got you know all kinds of issues there. So I I think we need to be careful because if we are going to be uh, spending money on stuff like that in certain parts of the area, then other parts of the area go. Well, why aren't you spending the money here? Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm not trying, I'm not knocking what you're saying, Becky, but I'm just saying I do think that we need to, uh, we, we, we do need to be circumspect. Yeah, we do. To and there should always be some sort of community aspect to it, so there should be a benefit to the community in some way, shape or form. That cafe is a typical example because we could have had that cafe back up and running, so we would have had public toilets and a cafe in an area that's got no facilities. And I think... The community would have backed us 100% on that one. So, you know. sure. I agree, and I think that um, to, to balance up what what Councillor Adam was saying about what the community expects, I know from being a school governor, and I think exactly the same applies with the town council. You are expected to have your money allocated, as the town park has now done, and to know what you're going to do with it, because we've got the highest precept in the area. Oh, thank goodness we're not putting it up this year. But residents have a right to expect that we have plans as to what we're going to do with that money, and therefore I think it is timely that, that we consider what we might do with, with the money we've got from there. But I, I quite take the point that we have to be very cautious mm. about that. Right, we have a proposal that's seconded. All those in favour? Let's carry. That's the budget. Thank you for that. Chair, yeah, I just thank the, uh, your good self, the town, town and deputy uh, town clerk, the public that they put into the budget. Uh, yeah, a set of accounts that are actually quite interesting. <laughs> oh, you can understand it. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing hidden. <laughs> we need to propose exclusion of the press and public. Be gone. <laughs> All those in favour? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.